this series, we're the second part. This is part two of this series called Restart. And, and I'm already getting a tremendous response from this. God is moving in a powerful way. And so many things we do in our life, and we get a good start, and then something happens, and we just, <laughs> boom, you know what I'm talking about. And a lot of times we need a restart. What happens with a computer when things go wrong? We used to control alt delete back in the 1900s. Y'all remember that? Some of y'all still do it because you get PCs and then converted to Apple. I get paid for that, by the way. No, I'm just kidding. I need to get paid for that. If if a if a preacher can use an Apple computer without anybody helping him set up, I guarantee you they're good. Because I ain't very smart. But listen, this series. I am praying is going to help you go to the next level and your life is going to be a powerful thing. The base of this series is Matthew chapter 6 verse 33. Take your Bibles and turn there with me. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33. Anything you do this year, I promise you, you can smash it up, filter it through, put it underneath, on top, around this scripture. And if this scripture uh, works... And whatever you're doing, I promise you, you'll go far. But look at it. It says, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be provided for you. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things are going to be provided for you. So what we talked about this last week was a very powerful thing about how to seek first in a certain area of our life and what we talked about was this refocusing our priorities and we went through three different things that will help us and if we're going to seek first the kingdom of God that means that the priorities the hobbies the careers the family decisions the individual personal decisions that you make have to seek first the kingdom of God in in Philippians chapter 3 verse 13 we looked at this and one of the things we noticed last week is the quickest way to lose focus of our priorities and moving forward is to focus on what? Is to focus on our past. <laughs> the fastest way to lose focus on what God wants you to do this year is to focus on the past. Philippians chapter 3, 13, last week we talked about, Paul said, the one thing I do, he said, forgetting the past, i looking forward to what lies ahead. And so we're going to have to do that. Last week we talked about three, did y'all get that? about three restart buttons last week. Uh, The first one was, do my priorities please God? (laughs) Just run your priorities in your year through that button. Then push the second button we talked about, are my priorities producing spiritual fruit in my life? Are they producing spiritual fruit? The third button we talked about pushing as a restart button was, was will it produce personal growth? So I encourage you to go back uh, and look at that message if you missed that on circlejcowboychurch.org, a powerful deal. But, so what are we going to talk about today? What's the next direction that we're heading, heading in this restart series? What is it that God's put on my heart that's so critical, that's burning? I can't wait to share with you. That this, I'm, I'm going to tell you, this deal we're talking about today is what makes or breaks people. I guarantee you, every time. You find a marriage that's fallen. You find a Christian that's fallen away from the Lord. You find some some tragedy that's happened. This deal that we're talking about makes or break that deal. It's why some people excel as Christians in life and some people don't. It's why you see these, these Christians that have these great successful lives and great successful families and marriages, they have what we're talking about today and they're able to sustain it. It's also, if you don't have it, it's why many people fall. And a lot of times when people lose this, uh, many times I see them never recover. They never get it back. They never recover. And so this, this deal I'm talking about is, is critical. It's very powerful. It, it is without this, you cannot stay connected to the body of Christ. You'll just dwindle out away from church. Without this, you cannot continue to grow as a Christian. Without this, you won't be serving God. You won't have the ability to do it. So it's very critical. So it's impossible. It's impossible to attempt 
a Christian walk that makes any difference at all without this. What are we talking about? Renewing our strength. Renewing our strength. Without strength, when times, why is this so critical? Why is it so important? Listen, at, at the heart of every fallen man, woman, single, it doesn't matter. There is a loss of strength right there in the middle of that. And the reason can't recover is because of a lack of strength. The reason marriages fall is a lack of strength, spiritual strength. The reason Christians fall into sin and, and defy God and the purpose that they're here, the reason Christians don't move in what God has for them is because they lose their strength at a very critical time when they need it the most and they don't have it so they can stop being connected to the body of Christ. Other priorities begin to take over, serving in the body of Christ what they were put on this earth for. They stop growing. They, they stop serving because they've lost strength. And so I'm praying that today that God will renew your spiritual inner strength. And not only that, will teach you how to regain that strength when you lose it and when you're on empty and when you have no strength left. I want us to turn to Isaiah chapter 40. Very powerful section of scripture here that we're going to camp in today. Isaiah 40, starting in verse 27, and we'll look down through 31. But Isaiah 40, look at that together. I encourage you to circle this in your Bible. Make notes in the side of the Bible. The points that I put here today and, and things I'm suggesting for you to do uh, I encourage you to write those things in your Bible or make notes, whatever it is. But look at it. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 27. It says, Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? He says, My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded from God, from my God, by my God. He's like he's, he's whining right here. Jacob is whining. He's lost his strength, and he's whining. He's wondering, Why? In verse 28, he says, he says, says, Have you not known and have you not heard that the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth? He does not faint. He doesn't grow weary. And he, his understanding is unsearchable. Look at verse 29. It says, He gives power to the faint. And to him who gives no, him who who has no might, he increases their strength. Even youth, strong, young, strapping men and women that can't, they seem to be invincible. Look here. Even youth shall fall and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and not faint. Let's pray. Father, we come to you. And you give a strategy, a scheme. There are steps in this scripture right here to help us renew our strength. I am praying, Father, in the name of Jesus that those that are strong here today, that you keep them strong. Those that are weak here today, that are ready to just fall out, Lord, that you renew their strength. Those that are headed down, spiraling down, making choices in their life, and they're just losing strength. It's like they don't have the strength to get back up again and soar like eagle's wings. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that you be the wind beneath their wings and you rise us up and renew our strength today and sustain our strength today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So, three things that I believe God points out here in this section of Scripture today that I want us to look at. Pete Pavelic said it right here. He says, to find renewed strength... We must understand these are the three things. We've got to understand the problem. We've got to trust in God's provision and put ourselves in a right position. I don't think he could have said it any better. So the first restart button that I want to encourage you to hit today that is focused on giving you total renewed strength in your life is this. You've got to understand the problem. 
What caused you to lose your strength in the first place? So many times we lose our strength and we just keep going. We keep dredging on. We keep pressing on. And we don't even know why once we had all this strength as a man, as a woman, as a Christian, as walking in the Lord, you had all this strength and you just lose it and you don't even realize you've lost it and you just keep going. So to lose your strength, the first thing you've got to do is try to figure out what the problem is. First grade, second semester, English. I learned that deal in there. It's easy. Stop and figure out what the problem is. What is the thing? What caused this in the first place? What caused you to not have any more spiritual strength in the first place? Why? Why did we lose that spiritual strength? What happened? What happened? Was the cause? Look back at verse 27. Verse 27, Isaiah 40, verse 27 spells it out. Jacob is saying, Why? <laughs> he said, Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? He says, That my, my way is hidden from the Lord. Why are you saying, Is my way is hidden from the Lord? My right is uh, disregarded by my God. So, you need to figure out the problem. Here's the problem right here. Here's the problem in this scripture in verse 28. Look at it. Have you not known? Have you not heard that the Lord is the everlasting God, creator of the ends of the earth? He does not faint or grow weary. He is understanding. His understanding is unsearchable. So, is the reason you have lost that inner strength it is the reason that we don't have that don't quit attitude can't stop you attitude not going to get burned out for any reason attitude burn on instead of burn out is that that kind of strength is the reason you don't have that strength because the problem is that you've lost focus like Jacob did, and who God is versus who you are. So many times we get to thinking about us and we lose sight of the strength comes from the Lord. And when we start trying to drum up that strength on our own is when we lose strength of all. And the more we focus on trying to gather that strength back up, the more we're not realizing what the real problem is and that we've lost sight of who God is, that he is. Have you not known we lose track? Have you, don't you remember, have you not heard? The Lord is everlasting. We're running out of gas, but he never, he's everlasting. The creator of the ends of the earth, he does not faint or grow weary. Why have you? You need to find out what the problem is. God doesn't faint or grow weary, but we do. Why? Is it because we've lost sight of who he is? Is it? Because we have done what Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, leaning on our own understanding. The Bible says, in all our ways, acknowledge him. And he'll make your path straight. But so don't lean on your own ability, your own understanding. And so the biggest problem that we have, and the biggest problem, the reason I believe that I lose my strength and you lose your strength is because we are operating on power that comes from man and not power that comes from God. There's a huge difference in us operating on power that comes from man versus power that comes from God. Look at it. Verse 28, it says, Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. He, his understanding is unsearchable. So what is it that, 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 that is, what is it that, that 
is so critical about understanding who he is and where the strength comes from in this. What is it that you have to do to, by knowing that he is God and he is everlasting and he never runs out of energy? What is it that you have to do to get that strength from knowing that? from the power from and knowing that it's not going to come from man or your friends or from anybody else that's got to come from him. What do you have to do, Todd, to tap into that kind of power? I need that strength. I need that renewed right now. Well, I'm glad you asked. How do you do that? you got to push the second restart button. The first one is you have to realize what the problem is. The second one is you have to trust God's provision to give you that strength back. Trust God's provision. So why is it so critical that we trust God to provide the strength? Well, I can tell you, it's because we can't create or sustain strength as human beings. You can't do it. You are not a good enough man. You're not a good enough planner. You don't have enough guts. You don't have enough ability. You ain't big enough. You can't do it. You were created by Almighty God to sustain your spiritual strength and power from Him. You hear me? It has to come from Him. And the reason you do not have it today is because you think you're big and bad enough to handle it without Him. Or you would have that spiritual strength. You would have provided, you would trust in his provision to do it. So number two, we have to trust God to provide the strength. Stop trying to make it happen yourself. That is the problem. Get in a position to understand that with your plans, listen, your plans cannot work your way out of giving you any kind of spiritual strength. Your money can't give you any kind of strength. Your health can't give you strength. Your, your provisions that you come up with yourself can't give you strength. Listen, if, you, if that's what you're depending on to give you strength and stability in the United States of America, you are headed for a fall and your life is upside down and you will not gain strength from having money in the bank. You will not gain strength from you being, being in the right career. You will not be sustained spiritually you won't get anywhere if all you're doing is trusting in your own provisions in that that's why you have no strength today we have to trust in God to provide those things and until your plans become God's plan until your money becomes God's money, until your health is trusted in God's hands, until your priorities are God's priorities and you're seeking first the kingdom of God and all of those things work together to help keep you connected into the body of Christ and to keep you growing spiritually and to keep you uh, serving God, if those things aren't God's, then you're not seeking the first the kingdom of God and all of those things and all of his righteousness and his strength will Will not be provided for you. These things will not provide be provided for you. Happiness will not be provided for you. You're just going to be wore out the rest of your days on this earth. Come quiet in here. I don't. I know this ain't easy. Well, y'all can just go away this morning if you want. I'm preaching to Todd Herbie. All right. I don't have a handle on inner strength myself. I said, God, I don't need to go preach to nobody. I need to go get in a room and preach this to myself. He said, well, get after it, son. You're there. <laughs> Apply it in your own life. What do you think I'm trying to do? I need inner strength. And I'm focusing on the problem. And I know now that I ain't bad enough to get it done by myself. I can't plan my way through this. My inner strength has to come from God, and yours does too. So the only way that we're going to renew our strength is to trust in God to provide it. That's the second push restart button. Look back at Isaiah chapter 40, verse 29. It explains it for us. It says, He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. God gives do you see that? He gives. God gives. God gives the power. Always outlasts. God-given power always outlasts man's power. 
God's power, God-given power always outlasts man's power. So it's not the power of a plan. It's not how hard you work. It's not your abilities. It's God's power is what has to give you that inner strength. Nothing else can do it. Nothing else will sustain. Nothing else will last. Nothing else has lasted to this point. And the reason you don't have strength is because you trust in that. Trust in God to give you that power, and he will renew your strength. Look at it. In verse 29, it says, he gives power to the faint. He, and, and it, is, it is to him who has no might. He gives it to us when we have no might if we trust in, number two, him to provide that. So why is this so important, Brother Todd? Why is, I understand this thing. Why is this so critical? You understand how many years I've been in ministry? I can tell you a bunch of years that, that I, I used to work for the old devil. And I wish I could take every one of those years back, but I can't. But I can spend the rest of my days on this earth trying to reach people for Jesus Christ. And that's what my life is surrendered to. He's called me to do that. And I'm going to spend the rest of my days, or day, or afternoon, or whatever it is, he, the days, times, seconds he has for me, that's what I'm called to do, and that's what I'm going to do. But do you realize, I, I, you know how long I've been in ministry now doing that? 23 years. I looked at it. 23 years. I've been in three churches uh, as an evangelist, as a recording artist, two complete tours. Close to 4,000 people have accepted Christ that I, I'm aware of. That has no idea of radio, media, stuff going out to prisons, anything, nothing that I, I think, and, and you, I've been involved with three churches since I've been in 23 years, served in all those, only left one church because God called me to go serve in another church. And you know what I, what I think? I was, I was thinking about how many conferences have I been through with American Fellowship Cowboy Church? How many ranch house schools have I done? How many people have I worshipped with? And I started doing the math, and I, was, and I think I've worshipped with some 4 million people in person in 23 years. That's not including when I was in church when I was a kid. Okay, I just started when I was 20 and started doing the math of how big the churches were, how many times a week we was in services, all the conferences. I, can, I have no idea. But what percentage of those 4 million people that I've come encounter with, that's not including any media or anything like that, in the last 23 years of my life, can I say have really inner strength as a believer? I don't know. I have no idea. But everywhere I go, I think it's a small percentage. I really do. I think it's a small percentage of every church I've ever been in that have and maintain that inner strength to keep going, that finish, that don't fall away, that aren't weak, but are a strong part of the body of Christ, that stay connected to the body of Christ and nothing can change that, that continue this growth pattern and get closer and closer and closer to the Lord every single year that has this awesome relationship and they never get tired of serving God. They never get tired of serving God. He gives power, I think, to those people. I think those people have got that part figured out and have stopped trying to have realized the problem. So the question is, how do you maintain that kind of spiritual strength? How do you maintain, how did those people do it? How do those people do it? How do they continue to press on? They never burn out. They always stay connected. They always stay growing. They always stay serving. They always stay focused. And they're always that small percentage of people. How do they do it? Why, why do, do we need to pay attention to them? Why do we need to focus on what's so critical in this? Why, why do we need to focus on our spiritual strength and compare ourselves maybe, maybe to them? I'll tell you why. It's because I want to be in that small percentage. And when I get to heaven, I want to be in that small percentage. Your life, my life, is not about what's going on right now. Your life and my life is about what happens after you die. <laughs> 
<laughs> the Bible says everything we're focused on here is a vapor. You know, a vapor. I used to take my hat, and uh, I would, uh, you take tinfoil in a pot. I usually get a pot about that big around. You know, I put hot water in it because I'm lazy, and I don't want to wait for it to steam up. And I make a little funnel sticking out. And, and I would steam my hats, I'd felt hat, straw hat, and I'd steam. I'd hold it in here, you know. And I had to sit there for a long time to get one little, little section. Now you got them big, you know what I'm talking about, over at cabinets or wherever. But I had to sit there a long time just to get this one side, and I'm going across this steam, across this steam, across. Turn my head over, across this steam, get that down. What happens when I reach down there and turn that burner off? But no, the steam stops. How long does that vapor stop? Pretty quick. It happens quick. That's how long our life is. God's looking at us. <laughs> are they going to figure out what the problem is, why they don't have any strength? Are they going to figure out and are they going to let me provide them the strength? That's what he's looking for. I want to be in that small percentage that my life is not focused on that steam. My life is focused on his strength. And I understand what this little life is, this little steamy life thing is that I'm going through in the realm of eternity. And that's what I pray that if you'll realize that, you'll get this inner strength too. So we, number two, the push button, is we have to push that restart button in our life, and that is that God has to provide. He's the one. We have to trust God to provide and give us that strength. That's very powerful. Here's the third push button right here. We have to get in right position. This one's key. This one's critical. You have to get it. Not only you got to feel out, feel out, realize what the real problem is, but you got to also you got to come to a point to where you're going to trust God to do that, but you got to get in position for God to do that. What do you mean? Well, position is everything. Look back at Isaiah chapter 30, uh, uh, chapter 40 and verse 30. It says, Even youth, the young whippersnappers, shall faint, and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. But they that wait on the Lord, say that with me, wait on the Lord. Say it again, wait on the Lord. Those that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up like wings, like eagles. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and not faint. It says even the youth, even the strongest, the ones that have the most energy, in verse 30, says they fall. They fall if they are in the wrong position. Even you. I love seeing the, the God and Cowboy on the New Year's Eve. All them young whoopersnappers that jumped out here and started working that week and ball the youth. I was just so proud of our youth, man. They were knocking home runs. They were working hard for the Lord. By the end of the week, they were passed out smooth. And guess who was still going? The old cripple guys. <laughs> They were still going. Why? Uh, it's one of the old cripple guys said, they asked, what, what are y'all on? What are y'all doing over there? I mean, how come y'all are still going? It's that inner spiritual strength. It doesn't matter what's slowing you down. It doesn't matter about broken joints and, and all kinds of stuff slowing you down. You get that inner strength from the Lord. You'll outrun a young man every day of the week. And so, hats off to you big boys, you old cripples. Half of them's on that ranch rodeo team. Old cripples got third place. I love it. So, listen. The key to renewing our strength lies right here in verse 31. How do you get in the right position? This is it. Look at it. But they that wait, they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They're the ones. That's the right position to wait on the Lord. They shall mount up like Wings like eagles, they're, they're the ones that are going to run and not go weary. They're not going to, they're going to walk and not fall down and faint. They're the ones that get renewed strength. The ones that get in position to wait upon the Lord. So when we get tired and your strength tank is on empty, what he's saying is you better pull over and wait in line at God's spiritual gas tank filling you up with spiritual strength before you keep trying to go down the highway of ministry or highway of husband or wife or, or youth or whatever it is. Before you keep trying to go, you better pull over and wait. 
to get that spiritual strength. How many people like waiting? Stick your hand up in the air. Surely somebody around here likes waiting. Do you like waiting? You're not telling the truth. I can't stand to wait on nothing. I can't stand to wait. Men aren't designed to wait, right? Uh -uh. The whole world's not designed to wait. We want stuff now. Fast food now. Give it to me now. It's the wrong position, wrong attitude to have around God. Anybody believe that's true? <laughs> Anybody ever try to get God in a hurry? <laughs> Does it work for you? No. We got to wait. That's the right position. So here's the biggest mistake right here I see Christians making across the world. This is the biggest mistake I see men making all the time. This is it. The quickest way to lose strength is to not stop. You see that? The quickest way to lose strength is to not stop. Hit that not stop button. Where are you going? Hit that not stop button. The quickest way to lose strength is not stop. Not stop to wait. Not stop to wait. Not stop to rest physically. Not stop to rest mentally, not stop to pace yourself. The quickest way to lose your strength is to hit that not stop button. So if you're going to renew your strength, listen to me. Y'all hear? You got to stop hitting that not stop button. The biggest problem I have with this is people. <laughs> As a pastor, nobody ever wants the pastor to stop. Never. Pastors aren't allowed to stop, right? If somebody calls you, you're 24 7, you can't ever stop. The biggest problem I have is people putting pressure on me to not stop. I think it's the biggest problem you got, too. People, you thinking you can't stop, you thinking it's wrong to stop. You, you thinking, you letting people put pressure on you to not stop. You've already been through a 60, 70 hour week and people put pressure on you to not stop. Just keep going and you push that not stop button. You push that not stop button. Listen, don't let people keep you going when you need to push that stop button and wait on the Lord. The biggest problem you got is people around you trying to get you to not stop. That's the quickest way. Quickest way to lose strength is not stop and let people put pressure on you to not stop. So, can I say something profound? That ain't biblical. It's not biblical. Not stopping's not in the Bible. Jesus stopped and took breaks and rest all the time. You look in Mark chapter 6, verse 30, and the apostles were doing all kinds of work, and they were serving the Lord. And it says the apostles returned to Jesus, and they told him all that they had done and taught. They're doing all this work for the Lord, and they're all excited. But listen to what Jesus said. And he said to them, Come away by yourself to a desolate place and rest a while. For many were coming and going and they had not even leisure or, or, or even had no leisure or even to eat. They didn't have time to eat. They're so busy. It says, and they went away on a boat to a desolate place by themselves. It's not biblical to not stop. It is biblical to stop. Jesus many times went to the mountain and rest. I like to go to the mountain. Anybody like to go to mountains? They're godly, aren't they? I like to go to a river. Amen. I like to get out in the woods. Yesterday evening, you know, I love to just get out and hunt and get on in a, my desolate place. Your desolate place may be on your back porch. Your desolate place may be in somewhere where nobody can get to you with the phone off. I don't know. But we've got to find a desolate place and rest for a while and wait on God to renew and provide strength. And many times for me, it's that desolate place where you can't find me, you can't get a hold of me, and the cell phone's been turned off and thoom, you ever like to do that? Y'all don't have that urge? You do? Okay, some, one honest man in the whole joint. Turn that sucker off and go, Doo! 
You wish you could chunk a cell phone every single day of your life. Wouldn't that be cool? Throw it on the ground, smash it. No, y'all just love that deal. Okay. No. Anyway, I don't go another, preach another message. So a desolate place. So what can I do to help me in this picture? I'm trying to say what are some things I could do to help you see how critical that desolate place is that you need to do. And how you're going to have to, what do you have to do to wait on the Lord? i got some examples that I want to give you here that maybe can, can give you some ideas. Again, before you see this, before you hit these buttons, okay, you may want to take a picture of these when they, they come up. i got a bunch of them fixing to fill that screen up with. But listen, these are things I'm attempting to do. These are things I've learned from people that I believe are in that small percentage. People like Adrian Rogers, dead and gone. But he didn't come into the church office until 2 o'clock every day of his entire ministry. Okay, I'm learning from people like that. I study when I find somebody that never loses their strength. That's who I want to hang around. That's who I want to be. How do you do that? What do you do? These are some things that I've learned from some great men and women and my mother and in in, in 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 my life. And so these are some things I want to share with you. Some ideas of what you can do. Listen, you've got to manage. Anybody know what manage means? Manage. Y'all know what the word manage means? You control, you drive, you change, you fix, you stop, you go, you manage. Manage rest daily. You got a big evening, get home early and say, I'm taking a nap. Woo, everybody like naps around here. You got a big night, manage your time, manage your rest. Sleep in that morning until at least 5.30 in the morning or something like that. I did say 5.30. That's a sleep-in date. No, a 6 o'clock sleep-in. That's, that's official sleep-in. Amen? In the morning, you kill boys. Listen, manage your rest. Manage it every day. How about this? Number two, worship daily. Set a time, however you want to worship. Say, thank you, God, for what you've done with me. If you want to do it in radio driving down the road, just stay on the road, please. But you worship, you say, you sing, you find some way to say, I love you, God, thank you, I worship you. And get in the Word every day. That will renew your strength of your mind. Read the Bible, listen to the Bible, listen to studies, go to Circle J Cowboy Church, there's just endless on there, whatever it is. Listen, look at that, number four, take a break every day. Every day you ought to turn that cell phone off if it's sitting on a tailgate on a pasture, whatever it is, and just sit there and pray and take a break. Take a break every day. Every day. Don't keep hitting that no, don't stop button. Don't keep doing that. Take a break every day. How about this, number five? Take off every week. Every Friday is my off day. You call on Fridays, you'll get forward to the church office. That's not a bad thing. It's okay. It's biblical to take off. You, if you own a company, sir, ma'am, you need to take off. If you can't raise up somebody to handle it for one day, you ain't managing it. <laughs> Take off. Every week, every person in here needs to have a plan to take off. Take off. If the phone is getting off or whatever it is. So, number six, abandon annually. Take a vacation. Can't nobody get you. They can't call you to make t-shirts. They can't call you to fix a plumbing, a broken plumbing pipe. They can't call cows are out. Somebody else can pin them. They can't get you. Abandon annually. Take a break. You need that. And the last thing is do things that put it in you. Every one of us are different. Find something that puts you. I like to go duck hunting. I like to deer hunt. I like to fish. Those are things I do to put it in me. I like to go to conferences. I like to spend time studying the Bible with people. Those are things I do. I like to pray with people. I like to talk to people. Certain people that are that that I'm not. They're not trying to ask me for anything. I'm trying to ask them. I want something from them. You know, I, I, whatever it is you do, find something that puts it in you. If it's watching a movie, want some dove, amen. <laughs> whatever it is, find something that puts it in you, and stop doing the things that are taking it out of you. Listening to studies or whatever it is, worshiping, do something. Find something that puts it in you and do those things. So. These are just some things that will help you get in right position to wait on the Lord.
to wait on the Lord. And that's what we all need to do is wait on the Lord. And so my encouragement to you is renew your strength. And we've said four things here today that I want to challenge you with this week to focus on these four things uh, to renew your strength. Under, figure out why you lost your strength in the first place. What was the problem? Okay. And number two, trust God to provide the strength. Not yourself. Trust God. And number three, get in right position. And how do you do that? You have to wait on the Lord. You can't keep going until you get that strength. And then you take off. And the fourth thing is stop hitting that daggum not quit button. <laughs> Not stop button. Stop hitting the non, don't stop button. Stop. Wait and rest on him. I'm, I'm not going to put this up there, but I just want to read it. It's so powerful. Isaiah 12, 2 says, See, God has come to save me. And he'll give you strength. Okay. He says, I will trust in him and not be afraid. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has given me victory. God's the one that gives us victory. And so uh, I, I just want to ask you right now to just spend some time with the Lord. I'm going to ask everybody to bow their heads before the Lord and before we head out of here to not be focusing on where you're going or what you're fixing to do, to focus on Him. And I'm going to ask you, if you got the guts, to get real with Him. And just be honest and say, God, I ain't got the strength. Maybe the problem's been that you're saying you, you got the strength, but today you've realized all the strength you're trying to get is coming from what you're doing or have or your own provisions, and it's not being provided by God. Say, God, I'm sorry. I've been trying to provide my own strength. That's why I have no strength. That's the problem. Today, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to wait on you to provide my strength. Help me find that desolate place that Jesus said to find strength. And Lord, give me the ability to, to quit hitting that button, that not stop button. Give me the strength. To stop hitting that not stop button so I can wait and rest. Lord, renew my strength in the name of Jesus. Give me strength to stay connected to you and what it is you've called me to do. Give me strength to grow, to be the man, the woman, the young person you want me to be. And give me strength to serve you. Still, with every head bow, everybody just focusing on God. I got to ask you one more question: Do you have the strength in you to get to heaven when you die? Do you have the ability to get to heaven? The Bible says you don't, and the Bible says that salvation is a free gift of God. It's not of works lest anyone should boast. The Bible says that Jesus is the way and the truth and the life, and no one comes to the Father except by Him. Will you pray this morning for Him to give you the strength to call Him Lord of your life? Remember it said, seek first the kingdom of God and all of His righteousness and all these other things, including heaven, will be provided for you. Will you seek first Him? He is your priority. Will you make him your priority and not all these other things in your life? Will you seek him first? Will you take Jesus this morning and for the exchange of heaven, will you have the, do you have the ability to seek first the kingdom of God? Will you make that commitment? It says if you make him Lord of your life, you seek his forgiveness that he'll forgive you. If
if that's a thing you need to do to receive strength from the Lord today, pray with me right now and say, God, today I have been my own strength. I've been not waiting on you to provide my strength. You are not the Lord of my life right now. And I absolutely want to go to heaven. And I want to make that change in my life to allow you to be my Lord here and forever. I do realize that my life now is just a vapor. And I've got to put you first. I don't have the ability to do that. But I want to trust you to do it and provide that in me, that kind of strength. If that's you today, you just pray, Jesus, please forgive me for making wrong choices and sinning. And I'm asking you to be my boss, my Lord, my Savior right now. In Jesus' name I pray.